In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I set up a brand new OneNote notebook for the new year, and just as importantly, what I do with the existing notebook. First, here are a few reasons why I recommend creating a fresh notebook for the new year versus adding on to or building on the notebook that you already have. For one, there's cognitive debt. Over the course of a calendar year, like many of us, I accumulate a lot of notes and information in OneNote. But not all these notes are useful, relevant, or actionable, and it'd be a burden to carry all this cognitive debt into the new year. Cognitive debt is caused by all the unused notes and info that mentally weighs us down. My current notebook is cluttered with articles that I never read, projects that I thought I would start but never did, or did start but abandoned, and a lot of reference materials that I collected for topics that I thought were interesting at the time but never revisited. Now, many people might tackle this problem by dedicating a Sunday afternoon to review every single note and decide which of them deserve to be moved into the new notebook. But this process is tedious, time-consuming, and since you're making a decision on what to do with each single note, this is going to cause decision fatigue. Your brain is going to tire out, and you're probably going to end up moving more stuff into the new notebook than you actually need. Now, if your notebook is anything like mine, you've probably accumulated a ton of information over the year. And let's be honest, unless you are super on top of your organization, the connections between your notes might have gotten a little fuzzy. What I mean is, you might have notes scattered all over the place, not always in the section where they truly belong. Personally, I use Tiago Forte's para method to keep things organized. And just as a quick side note, if you're interested in learning more about the Para system, definitely click on the video in the card above. It's a fantastic system that I've been using for the past few years. I have a full deep dive on how to use it in OneNote. But back to the issue, I've got notes sitting in my inbox that have never got properly filed, or maybe in a rush I started a page in the wrong section that never got moved. And over time, that structural integrity, the system, it starts to break down. There's no way that I want to bring all of that chaos into the new year and build on a foundation that's no longer solid. Lastly, you want to avoid the psychological weight. A system cluttered with old files could feel lived in and heavy, lacking the energy of a fresh start. Okay, so what do we actually move over into the new notebook? In a typical year, I accumulate over a thousand notes. Realistically, only about 5% maybe of my notes are live. These are the active projects that I'm actually working on right now. These are the notes that I'll move over into the new notebook. The other 95%, they're reference material. They're useful, but not urgent. These are things that I might need again someday, but just not today. Instead of dragging all of that forward, I archive them all. And later in this video, I'll show you how I can still access this information easily without having to reopen the old notebook. Essentially, what we're doing is we're shifting from a push mentality where you push everything forward to a pull mentality where you only bring a note into 2026 when you actually need it to get work done. So let's actually move over to OneNote and see how this all works. This is my personal home notebook, and as you can see, my notebook is organized into the para framework that I mentioned earlier. So I have projects, areas, resources, and archives. But it really doesn't matter how you have your note organized. It could, you might have your notes organized by project or by subject, maybe even in date order. It doesn't matter. So leaving all this intact, I'm not going to close this notebook just yet. We're going to create a new notebook. So this is a new notebook for 2026. I'll go to File new and you want to create the new notebook in OneDrive so that you can access it from different computer. So I am going to create in a different folder. I want to make sure that I am in my documents and my notebook folder. I will call this 2026 home notebook and hit create. I don't want to invite any new people. This is my personal home notebook, so I'm just going to say not now. And you can see that I have the 2026 home notebook now created. Because I use the para framework, I'm going to create the structure for this notebook. 
Again, you create the structure however you see fit. For me, it's going to be section groups for project, area, resources, and archive. Those are the four section groups that I'm going to create, and then I'll layer in different sections underneath. I'm going to skip forward. Maybe I'll do one with you and then I'll skip forward. I'm going to right mouse click and go to section group, choose one project. Maybe we'll do another right mouse click, new section group, 02 area, and I'll skip forward. I'm just creating resources and archive the same way. Now my new notebook is set up with the para framework. Let's just clean it up. I have this new section here. I can just delete. Yes. Now I have project area, resource and archive. Perfect. Remember we're using the pull method, not a push method. So any notes that I'm actively using like today, most likely tied to a project that I'm currently working on, I'm going to pull into the new notebook. And for me, for this example, because we're using my home notebook, there's really only one active projects that I'm working on that I want to bring over. And that's the website domain transfer. So what I'll do now is probably the easiest way is to just drag this whole section into my new notebook and drop it where it says project. I'm going to let it go. And then you can see the whole section has been moved over to my current project. Now there's a few other ways to do this. For example, if I wanted to move my vacation project, which is no longer relevant. But if I did want to move this over, I just right mouse click and choose move or copy. And I can scroll down to the new notebook, expand it, and then just drop it into project and then hit move. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to cancel and then go back to my new notebook. Now you can do this with the other projects that you're working on. Again, for me, this is the only project. And you might be thinking, wow, the this feels really light. You're only bringing in one notebook from your entire collection of notes from 2025, but it's really designed to work this way. Again, you don't want the, the cognitive burden or the mental weight of bringing all this unused notes into the new system. This is fresh. Like if you're using a, a physical notebook, uh, you're always starting fresh, right? So just keep that analogy in mind. We want this to be fresh. We don't want this to be bogged down by old notes. Okay, now we're ready to let go of the old notebook. I'm going to go to my 2025 notebook, right mouse click, and I will close the notebook. Now it's gone, but don't worry. I'm going to go to OneDrive. I'm going to drag this window over. And you might see your notebook. I know I have a ton of notebooks. I'm going to go to My File document and this is where I save all my notebooks. I'm going to find the 2025 para notebook for home. This is it and I will rename it. So go to rename and then choose 2025 archive. So I know that this notebook has been archived. Now this is different from let's go back to one note here. If I were to just go here, go to properties and rename the, the notebook here, you're only changing the display name. You're not changing the file name. So that's the distinction. So don't do it here. That's why we close the notebook and we went to OneDrive to change it here. Now you could do a better job of organizing the files in here, but I would keep all of the archive notebooks in one folder under the the folder archive. Let's actually do that here. So I'm going to just create a new folder, call it 04 archive to keep it consistent. And then I can bring this into the archive folder. I would do this for 2026, 2027. As you close out and archive your notebooks, you can keep it all in one place. Okay. So I have it now here. Now with your notebook archived, if you did want to search for a note or information that's saved in this archive notebook, is to just click on it and it'll open in the web version of OneNote and it maintains the file structure. So you can go and navigate exactly the same way as you would on the desktop version. 
but because this is not open in the desktop version, it's not weighing things down, you're keeping it separate, you still have access to all of the notes uh, with the organization structure intact. So this is one way. Another way, perhaps more direct way to access notes in your notebook is to search for them directly in the OneDrive search bar. This method is more efficient, especially if you have multiple notebooks and you don't exactly remember where the notes that you're searching for lives in. So for example, I'm looking for a specific note called AI prompts. And as a reminder, this is not actually the name of the notebook. It's the name of a page within a notebook. So I'm going to click on this. And you can see that page loads up in the wet view along with the entire notebook. So again, I have the entire notebook with all of the structures intact. It just happens to open up to this very specific page that I'm looking for, which is nice. Now, if I find myself accessing this page often, then I know that I need to move it over to the 2026 notebook, right? Because I don't want to have to search it this way. It should just live with my current notebook because I access it so often. So here, I'm just going to select all and copy and open up my OneNote desktop version. And then I will create a section within my resources section group. And I will paste it and name it AI prompts. And I will repeat this process. As I work on new projects, I'll find myself referencing info from one of the archive notebooks. If those reference notes are useful and relevant, I will copy them over into the new notebook. And that's been my process that served me well. So there you have it. This is how I start a new notebook in the new year. It's normal to have some reservation about approaching a new notebook this way. But remember, you want your workspace to stay lightweight so that your brain can focus on creating rather than curating. You only want active tasks and information that you need today to be in this notebook. Anything else can still be accessed through the archive. And using this fresh start method, maybe you're spending an hour or 90 minutes max setting up your system versus spending like eight plus hours all day really on a Sunday trying to organize the past. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about this, please leave it in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks and happy new year.